So good morning and welcome to Dean Cemetery, to Joe and Mike's Hidden Corners. What we like to do is to maybe a little bit deeper, just for short little pieces on people who are famous here in Scotland and maybe give you a little bit more understanding of maybe of the culture or maybe of some of the people, some of the history. People who are not up there with the most famous uh, Scottish characters. And today I'd like to talk about Major General Sir Hector Macdonald. Hector Macdonald was born in 1853. He was a son of a crofter, so part of the subsistence farming community way up north. He was born a Gaelic speaker and he learned English. So he came from very, very humble circumstances. At the age of 17, he started his apprenticeship as a draper in Inverness, realised that this was not going to be the life for him, so he joined the army. His career in the army was meteoric, but it was all done on merit. At the time, we're talking about the, the Victorian period, we're talking about the height of the empire, and he joined the Gordon Highlanders, and he saw action all over the world, particularly in the, within the realms of the British Empire. Because of his exploits throughout the different countries, he started to get promotion. And everywhere he went, he was recognised for his heroic deeds. So much so that he was getting promoted and promoted and promoted. He was in Afghanistan. He was in South Africa for the two Boer Wars. He was in the Egypt-Sudan War. Everywhere he went, he was being praised. But he never really felt comfortable with the class that he was mixing with. Remember, he came from very humble circumstances. His promotion was putting him into positions where he was meeting people from the establishment of the British Army. Everything was going well until he went to Ceylon. When he was in Ceylon, he had a bit of a contretemps, a bit of a battle with the High Commissioner there. His name was Joseph West Ridgway. Now, West Ridgway was very, very envious of Hector MacDonald. He didn't think a man from his circumstances should be mixing with the best or the elite of, of Britain. When Hector MacDonald arrived in Ceylon, as it was known then, now known as Sri Lanka, he realised that the militia there was really not what it should be. They were not professional army, so he pushed things into shape. He started to lose a little bit of uh, relationship with the establishment over there. I remember they were all part of the empire imperialists to the extent and Joseph Ridgway became very very jealous and he started to spread the rumour that he was gay that Archibald Hector Archibald MacDonald was gay and the rumour started to spread and started to build up now we're talking about the end of the 1800s beginning the 1900s the relationship deteriorated to such an extent that Hector MacDonald actually humiliated Ridgway on the parade ground and asked him to leave the parade ground. And so the rumour started to build. Ridgway started to gather information through gossip, through other circumstances, all innuendos, to the point where it became more and more well, sort of accepted that he was having a relationship with some of the locals and also with some of the sons of the establishment. None of this was true, however. However, he was convinced, uh, MacDonald was convinced to go back to London to try and clear his name. He went back to London, but in London, they couldn't do anything about it because homosexuality, although it was illegal in London, was not illegal in Sri Lanka. And he was there to clear his, clear his name. However, it was suggested when he got back to London, even King, King Edward VII, had suggested that the best way that MacDonald could clear his name is by shooting himself. This was where it came to. However, what they didn't know was that Hector MacDonald had actually married secretly here in Edinburgh and he actually had a son. He married secretly because as a young soldier, he needed permission from his commanding officers to marry and he didn't have that permission. So he had a secret wife and child here in Edinburgh. When he was in London, he was then convinced to go back to, to go through a court martial back in Sri Lanka or Ceylon. So he left Sri Lanka and went to Paris. Now you have to take in a bit of the cultural uh, circumstances here. Britain was just recovering from the Oscar Wilde debacle of the trial of Oscar Wilde and so 
this was playing on the minds of a lot of people. Hector MacDonald did not want to get pulled into these sort of things. The British press kept very quiet about the whole thing, about the affair, out of deference to him because he was a hero. He was a hero in Scotland and he was a hero in England. He was a national hero. However, he went to Paris. While he was in Paris, he went down to breakfast in his hotel and he picked up one of the American newspapers. And the American newspapers had it all over, spread all over the press about the affair of MacDonald, this national hero. MacDonald then wrote a few letters, went up to his room and he shot himself in the head. He committed suicide. It didn't end there. There was still a debate as to what they should do with the body. The establishment in Britain said, well, we should keep it quiet and, I, and bury him in Paris. However, they couldn't do this. They didn't have permission for the French. So they put him into an unmarked coffin, secretly took him back to London, put him into an ordinary train and brought the coffin up unmarked up to Edinburgh and tried to bury him in secrecy. It's said that even the hooves of the horses that were carrying the cart with the coffin had sackcloths on them so they wouldn't make a noise going through the streets. Whether or not that's true, I don't really know about that one. But he was, they did try to build, uh, bury him in secret. However, the local newspapers found out about this. And on the weekend of his interment, 30,000 people, bear in mind, 30,000 people came here to pay respect to Hector MacDonald in the first weekend. Throughout the first week, over 110,000 people were lining up outside the cemetery to come and pay the respects. And then through public subscription, they built this monument. Now Hector MacDonald had the last say in all this, and I want to read you comments that were made from an official commission of the, His Majesty's government at the time. And this was on June the 29th. 1903. In reference to the grave charges made against the late Sir Hector MacDonald, we, the appointed and undersigned commissioners, individually and collectively declare on oath that after the most careful, minute and exhaustive inquiry and investigation of the whole circumstances and facts connected with the sudden and unexpected death of the late Sir Hector MacDonald unanimous, unanimously and unmistakably find absolutely no reason or crime whatsoever which would create feelings such as would determine suicide in preference to conviction of a crime affecting the moral and irreproachable character of so brave, so fearless, so glorious and unparalleled a hero. And we firmly believe the cause which gave rise to the inhuman and cruel suggestions of crime were prompted through vulgar feelings of spite and jealousy in his rising to such a high rank of distinction in the British Army. And while we have taken the most reliable and trustworthy evidence from every accessible and conceivable source, have without hesitation come to the conclusion that there is not visible the slightest particle of truth in the foundation of any crime. And we find the late Sir Hector MacDonald has been cruelly assassinated by vile and slandering tongues. So here we have it, a man who rose up through his own merit, brought down by the vile tongues of the aristocrats of the day as well. So I'm going to leave you with a picture of his tomb here. Give you this, so you might want to look a bit, bit more into this case of Sir Hector MacDonald, one of these hidden little cases uh, in history, and hope it brings you to life as to how in Scotland we have this conflict sometimes between the meritocracy that we are brought up to believe in, and also the conflict with the aristocracy. So they've got conflict between meritocracy and aristocracy. Thank you.